ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. As the political clouds hover ominously above the Prime Minister, three UK constituencies are preparing for by-elections. At risk of losing three more Conservative MPs, Rishi Sunak faces battles in Selby and Ainsty, Somerton and Froome, and Boris Johnson's former hunting ground, Uxbridge and South Ryslip. And with just two weeks to go before voting on the 20th of July, an exclusive poll for the Evening Standard by JL Partners shows a striking eight-point lead for Labour in Uxbridge, a 12-point lead in Selby, and the Lib Dems appear to be in the driving seats ahead of the vote in Somerton and Froome. This year, we could see three more by-elections held across England and Scotland, as the future of Chris Pincher, Nadine Dorries and Margaret Ferrier are still up in the air. So, as these Tory by-elections stack up, how much trouble are the Conservatives in? And what will the results of these votes reveal about the public's political leanings ahead of the next general election? Our political editor, Nicholas Cecil, has been examining the latest data around these by-elections. So, Nick, a stark warning for the Conservatives, specifically in Uxbridge and South Ryslip. Why would it be so significant for Labour to win that seat? Well, it would be very significant. London is largely a Labour city. There are more Labour MPs in London than they are Conservative MPs. But if you go out to the suburbs in London, then it becomes more Conservative. Specifically, Uxbridge and South Ryslip, Labour hasn't won that seat since 1966, when England last won the Football World Cup. So that's how far back you've got to go. Previously, there have also been two by-elections there. One in 1972, which the Conservatives won, and one in 1997, which the Conservatives also won. So even at the very height of Tony Blair's due Labour, the Tories were still winning in Uxbridge. And so a lot of people don't realise how significant it would be for Labour to actually win here. And this polling by JL Partners has come up with some sort of key priorities of locals in Uxbridge and South Royslip. What are those priorities based on on those polls? Well, certainly the election seems to be coming down to a a battle between national cost of living issues against one key issue locally, which is the extension of the ultra low emission zone to outer London. So the polling found that six out of 10 adults in Uxbridge say that cost of living issues like food prices and energy bills are in their top three issues, which they say will determine, sway their their, their vote. So that's the highest figure. A a further 29% say it's rents and mortgage levels. If you look at the local issue, which is the ULES, four out of 10 people say the ULES is one of those key issues in their top three priorities. So... That's what it really boils down to is these national issues which are affecting everyone across the country and this one particular issue in the constituency, which is this this new motoring charge. At the moment, the poll suggests that Labour will win because the national issues, cost of living, rents and so on, NHS waiting lists are a bigger priority for voters there than the ULEs. So do you think Rishi Sunak will be judged by voters on his five key pledges that we hear about every week, or actually the priorities outlined in the polling by JL Partners? I think it's very much the priorities outlined in the poll, because this is what people are are actually experiencing. They're feeling their family budgets being squeezed. They're having to wait long time to to, to see a doctor or to to get a hospital operation done. And, And while Mr Sunak has made his five priorities, I suspect Many people out in the country still don't know what they are. And so it'll be far closer to the election, I think, before people will start making a judgment on whether he's met them or not. And these, of course, are only three seats coming up for by-election in a couple of weeks' time, also in different parts of the country. But will they provide us a better picture at all of the country's overall political feelings ahead of the general election? Yes, I think what's interesting with these by-elections, is that there's so many by-elections. The fact that we've got potentially six by-elections, five in England and one in Scotland, possibly, 
means that this really will take the temperature of the country in different parts of Britain. So we've got one in Somerset, we've got one in London, we've got one in North Yorkshire, potentially one in Mid Bedfordshire as well, and potentially one in Tamworth, um, as well as the one in Scotland. So I think with six polls, you'll know roughly where the nation stands uh, on, on politics and, and who they want to be in government. Let's take a break now. Nick's back in part two to explain how tensions are rising among Conservative MPs. There are signs of division for Rishi Sunak. There's a group of right-wing MPs from the 2015-2019 intake who are making noises now. When you look at the data from JL Partners... An eight-point lead for Labour in Uxbridge, a 12-point lead in Selby. Do you think these leads are down to Labour making all the right noises? Or is it simply a case of people losing faith in the government and Rishi Sunak because of the tough times that we're facing and what they're having to deal with? I think it's largely the the, the latter. So governments tend to struggle, uh, especially mid-term, especially in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis, an economic crisis. There's also a crisis in the health service, kind of waiting lists of over 7 million people is a very, very high high number. So the government is, is in deep, deep trouble. The polls do not suggest that Labour are cutting through in a big way yet. People are probably starting to listen to Labour now, and that's partly down to the fact that the government is doing so badly. But there's certainly a, a, a quite widespread perception that Keir Starmer is, is yet to seal the deal with the electorate. And as we mentioned, obviously, we know these three by-elections are coming up this month with potentially three more to come. I mean, based on the polls, are we expecting the Conservatives to lose six MPs? At this stage, it's very hard to call. So polls all have a certain margin of error. A consistency poll of this size probably has a margin of error of 4% or so. So... When you take that into account and and you look at the gap differences, um, things could still shift quite significantly. For example, in Uxbridge and South Islip, if the ULES campaign opposition to it really gets going, that could have a factor. We've also got some um, new inflation figures due out shortly, so that could have another impact. So certainly it's looking at very difficult for the Conservatives, but they, they've got some large majorities which they're defending. So it's definitely too early to call in many of these seats. The, the, the one seat which does appear likely to be a, a Tory loss more clearly than other ones is uh, in Somerton and Frome. There, David Warburton, a Conservative MP, or, or he used to be a Conservative MP, has stood down amid some allegations which he denies. So I think the Lib Dems are, are very much favourites to win there. But the other by-elections around the country, I, I think they're harder to call at this stage. And in terms of these poll sort of forecasts, really, in a situation like this where it's a pretty bad forecast for the party in power, does it sort of create tensions among MPs? And has there been any evidence of that recently? Yes, generally parties which are doing well in the polls tend to be united partly because they're united and partly because they're doing well in the polls. And parties that are doing badly and that are unpopular tend to have growing divisions because lots of MPs think they or other people could do better than the current leader. There there are signs of division for Rishi Sunak. There's a group of right-wing MPs from the 2015-2019 intake, uh, including, interestingly, Deputy Chairman Lee Anderson, who are making noises now that they suggested that a visa scheme for overseas workers should be scrapped. This has been swiftly rejected by the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay. But there's a group of 25 MPs there. They're agitating. I don't think they're a serious threat to the Prime Minister at all. But I don't think there's any great desire now to, to, to get rid of Rishi Sunak as Tory leader. Um, they've been through quite a few recently in the last couple of years. So um, I think uh, Mr Sunak is there for the election and he'll just have to see how well he does. And we're still quite a long way from the general election, which we know could come as late as January 2025. Are you expecting it to be as late as possible to give the PM time to sort of claw back some credit in the meantime? I think the most likely time of the election is still autumn um, 2024. 
I think in the spring of that year, the Conservatives will still be trailing quite, quite significantly. Um, Mr Sunak will, will want as much time to deliver his five key pledges and to try and get some feel-good factor to return to the country. But leaving it till January, that all looks a bit desperate. That looks like you're clinging to the curtains of number 10, trying to stay in there for as long as possible before the voters kick you out. So I doubt he'll go that far. So again, autumn is the most likely, and that's certainly what most MPs think. There's more news, interviews and analysis in the Evening Standard newspaper and at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back on Monday afternoon at four o'clock.